we're going to move on here to our next guest here in set, uh, Inez Stepman. She's back on the show. She's a senior policy analyst at Independent Women's Forum, and we'd love to have her in studio. Welcome back, Inez. Thanks hey. for having me. So uh, Naomi Rao, President Donald Trump's nominee for uh, Justice Brett Kavanaugh's old position on the Court of Appeals for the Washington, D.C. Circuit, had been under fire uh, because of an article she wrote back in her college days. Now, you wrote an op-ed about this. Uh, what are your thoughts on the nomination? Sure. Well, um, let's start with the first of three points. She's eminently qualified. This is a woman who's gone through um, University of Chicago Law School. She graduated undergrad in Yale. She clerked for Justice Clarence Thomas. And then she's worked um, both in the Senate Judiciary Committee and for two White House administrations, in this case in an office called OIRA, which deals directly with regulatory reform, which makes her an absolute perfect fit for this court. Because as you mentioned, this is the D.C. Circuit Court. And because um, so many of the federal government agencies, the alphabet soup agencies, right, HHS, Department of Ed, um, those cases go through that court more often than not because those agencies are situated in Washington, D.C. So she has a background that is perfect for this seat on the court. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, can we just talk just for a brief moment about how the standard is now going to be going back to college to digging up whatever or high school in some cases, whatever silly thing somebody has said or done or written? Um, I, I don't know. This this as a millennial, this standard worries me a little bit. We're going to come back to, you know, down the line 20 years from now when we're, you know, in, our, uh, in the height of our careers, we're going to be dealing with stuff we put Everything on Facebook. Is archived. Yeah. 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 Put least, it all on Facebook. At least in Virginia, um, it's, it's OK. <laughs> if you're a Democrat, you can get away with that stuff. But in, it's it, the standard is really against Republicans. Look, I mean, there are things that have to be evaluated, even if they happened a long time ago. I'm not saying everything should be, you know, forgotten just because it happened a long time ago. But this this idea that we're going to dig through every dumb thing that everyone has ever done from the age of 16 to 22, that should also, not be Can you say exactly what she said? She said yeah. you should avoid alcohol or getting drunk. Mm -hmm just to protect yourself, be smart. That's essentially what she was saying, and people were saying she was victim-blaming by just advocating common sense in many respects. Absolutely. So the third thing I was going to get to was um, the, the idea that this is not even, in my view, this doesn't even qualify as young and dumb, right? Um, she has apologized for some of the phrasing. Perhaps she wishes she had phrased it in a more nuanced way. But the fundamental message that she put out in her column is correct, right? The, the, the idea that getting extremely drunk makes women particularly vulnerable to sexual assault, that does not excuse. And she was very clear in her column to say, we should prosecute men who assault women. That being said, it's very common sense advice to say you are making yourself particularly vulnerable as a woman when you get completely blackout drunk and you're no longer able to defend yourself. That was good common sense advice, especially on undergraduate campuses where the research shows that the connection between sexual assault and excessive drinking is really, really strong. This was common sense advice, and I don't even think it qualifies as, as sort of an embarrassing moment of her past, even if she wishes maybe she had phrased it a little differently 20 years later. She's probably a better writer than she was in college, but I, I think the fundamental advice is very sound. Well, I don't know her past very well, but I do agree that there is a fundamental difference between the possibility of committing an assault versus an opinion, because you can change your opinion. You cannot change whatever the fact that you did. Um, and the Wall Street Journal said that she had been Kavanaugh uh, by the Democrats. Do you think the Democrats would have the same reaction if she was not, not nominated by President Donald Trump? Look, I, I do think she has a particular target on her back because she is such a good fit for this court. And this court is often seen, as we saw recently with Kavanaugh, with a seat that she is um, is taking, but also with three of the other Supreme Court justices, that this can often be a, a stepping stone to the Supreme Court. So I think they're throwing everything at her that they can try to get stick right now because I think they see her as a danger eventually of ascending to the Supreme Court. And she is has a very conservative jurisprudence, um, especially with regard to federal agencies, as I said. So I think for that reason, she's got a target on her back. But um, if this is if this is what they can dig up about Naomi Rao, I, I really don't think she has anything to be ashamed of. I think that she wrote some columns that communicated good common sense advice. Well, if anything, it's good vetting for the Supreme Court for her. But so who's going to take her spot? Because I know that that's uh, something I, I, I get it that the court is, is much longer lived than any one administration. So it's a better spot longer term strategically. But who's going to take her place in the regulatory reform? Because that was something that she 
she's so good at. Absolutely. And I, I don't have a list of names for you, um, but it is a very, very key priority. I think it's one of those things that has gotten conservatives more and more on board with Donald Trump. The fact that his deregulatory agenda has been so successful and he has been able to repeal so many regulations and, and almost as important, stop a lot of new regulations from going into effect. And then the link with the court is actually really important. So um, especially since Justice Gorsuch has been um, nominated and then confirmed to the Supreme Court, uh, he is is, he is on record, he has written extensively about the idea that federal courts and the judiciary have to stop deferring so excessively to agency interpretation of the law. Um, this is kind of a, a growing thread in, in uh, law schools and in jurisprudence and, and, and um, legal thinking, and I think that it's definitely something keep, worth keeping an eye on. It's critical, in my view, to restoring actual control by the people, right? We elect folks, we all squabble about who we elect, we yell at each other, but then the reality is that so much of our policymaking is now done through regulatory agencies where we haven't elected anyone and we have no real accountability for a lot of these folks. So I think that's a really, really important aspect of law. And I think that's probably another reason why her nomination is getting so much scrutiny. All right. All right. Thanks we so will much. leave it there, but um, please come back.